Greetings, fellow humans. Well, this is my first ever attempt at making a legitimate YouTube video, so bear with me as I muddle through this. For starters, let's get the intros out of the way. I'm the Biker Scout, and a little background about me, other than the obvious Star Wars reference, I ride a motorcycle full-time. But I'm a professional designer and photographer first. I've been using Photoshop since uh, 2.0, is that uh, 1990-ish? So I know my way around a computer and photo editing software. And I just had to make this video in response to the crap that NASA's been feeding us the scientific proofs for the general archives and public domain. When in fact they're employing very amateurish photo retouchers. I'm a stickler for details and an avid pixel peeper. And I'll tell you what, if I was employed by NASA, the fake images would be flawless. There are so many absurd photographic anomalies in their archives, but I'm only going to focus on a couple that have all been released within the last few months here in 2015. So let's get started. Alright, let's go straight to the horse's mouth here and download the image right off of NASA's website. And open it into Photoshop. Okay. Now, one thing that you should know is there are all kinds of different blacks. So, in order to see what's actually black or slightly black, you uh, invert the image. Now, in doing this, you reveal some very interesting characteristics about our perfectly round sphere globe Earth here, which we're told it's an oblique spheroid and not perfectly round. But Photoshop round tool selection marquee thing here will uh, disagree. Now, as I make a selection here, and let me scoot this back on the screen. Okay, I'm not exact size, but it doesn't matter for this because I'll show you why here in a minute. The marquee tool has a very distinct stair step shape in, in the pixel definition. And as you can see here, NASA's image, as you toggle around between the feathered edge, that the stair step matches perfectly with an exact sphere. That means they used Photoshop to delete the background, but they didn't do a very good job. As you can see here, there's a bunch of little random pixel anomalies floating in space. The most obvious that nobody really saw until you invert the image is up here. This is a strip of blue sky cloud that for somebody forgot to erase. Now, this is very obvious when you invert the image back. And uh, look at that. That is blue water, people, and it should not be out in space unless this was a retouched image. This is not an official photograph of Earth from one million miles away, as they're saying. There's a lot of things th about this image that mm, I don't really like in terms of uh, clarity and definition that just can't be taken from a four megapixel camera from one million miles away. I mean, the detail's astonishingly ridiculous. I mean, you can clearly make out the Central Valley in California. You know, you can see land details. And I'm sorry, four megapixels from one million miles away. I don't know. Nice. All right, moving on. Let's check out Commander Scott Kelly's photograph of the Earth, Moon, Venus, transit. Um, really beautiful image, but let's uh, see what we can find here. He's a Nikon user, as are all the astronauts. Uh, that will become of importance here later on. I'll mention that in a minute. First, let's open it and do what we did before. We'll invert the image, and we'll see if there's any strange things afoot. My suspicion was the lens flare. It looked too Hollywoodish to me. It looked too much like a plug-in or a filter. But I was blown away when I saw this really glaringly obvious cover-up of something. Now, to me, it looks like they just took the uh, brush tool and blocked something out by just selecting black. But they didn't use the eyedropper tool to sample the nearest color black. So they're, like I said, blacks aren't all the same once you start looking at it as an inverted image. It looks black. Now they may have blocked something out for artistic reasons, but as soon as you do that, it's a manipulated image, and you can't claim it as authentic. You know, it's now a composite. You know, you've edited it, you've retouched it, and I think they're obligated to mention when they do. 
and not always in the obfuscated terms of mosaic and composite as NASA always seems to do. Alright, let's check this image out here. Everybody might remember this one. This is the famous moon transiting the Earth in front of NASA's Discover satellite that's a million miles away parked out in geosynchronous orbit. Okay, let's right-click this bad boy, put it in Photoshop. It's a GIF for animated purposes, but the cool thing about GIFs is you can actually open them up in Photoshop and you can see all the layers that the GIF is made out of. Kind of cool. So let's uh, zoom in here and check it out. All right, you start activating layers and the moon comes into frame. But what is this? Why is the leading edge of the moon green? Obviously, that shouldn't be like that. So, uh, what's going on here is NASA has south parked a dim moon image because they said it's the dark side of the moon, so obviously we think the image needs to appear darker, but it's passing right in front of the Earth, in front of the sun, full sun, full moon, so that means it should be bright, really bright, bright as the clouds, in fact. There's more green fringing, keep turning on these layers. Obviously they were able to delete the green fringing on the leading edge as it left the frame, but they were pretty lazy here as it exited the frame. More green fringing. Now, it seems to me like they just used some uh, green screen software and plucked or tried to uh, get a nice clean image, but they couldn't because here's a bunch of pixel noise all over the place. That means nobody actually did anything. They clicked a button and they tried to use the algorithm to remove the green. Didn't do a very good job of that. Now, there's a lot of problems with this, you know, image um, that people have noted already. Clouds obviously don't move, and if this was taken over a period of time, um, clouds move pretty fast. But the one thing that I really dislike about this image is the fact that who's got the real moon? Commander Scott Kelly has a picture of the moon from the space station, and he's 237 miles away from his vantage point. Now, or 237,000 miles away from his vantage point. And this Discover satellite image is 1 million miles away, minus 237 miles of distance between the Earth and the moon, yet it looks like a dim, dead rock. Um, if I were to be asked which one is real, well, it looks like Commander Scott Kelly's picture is real, and the NASA one, which they're claiming is real, clearly isn't. It's a cut and paste and a real poor job at that. Here's one last image showing a famous Earth shot from the International Space Station. It's beautiful. Um, NASA uses Nikon, like I said before, so uh, Commander Kelly has graciously taken a picture, selfie, of his own camera, so we see what model it is. We can even see that there's a massive fisheye lens on this thing. But knowing those two things is key ingredient in fixing the photos. So in Photoshop, there's a lens distortion correction filter you can use. You just plug in what kind of camera you have, what kind of lens you have, boom, voila, it flattens the image out and corrects the distortion, whether it's pin cushion or barrel distortion or even fisheye. Um, you know, the other thing that's going on in this photo here is, everybody will point out, um, there's a giant hot spot fairly close to the Earth. If the Sun was, in fact, 92 million miles away, uh, the Earth would be lit in a broad, illuminated, wide swath of light and not just like a light bulb um, as we have here. That's just something interesting I've noticed. Um, but anyway, that's it. That's my YouTube analogy wrap-up video of some things that I've really had a problem with and I noticed not a lot of people were addressing in their YouTube videos, whether they're flat earthers or NASA conspiracy people or moon debunkers. Uh, you know, it's the photography that really uh, gives away, you know, their deceit. And I think more ought to be brought up about this. I think uh, they're sloppy, they're lazy, and they're hiding something. What that something is, I don't know. Can we reach any higher than low Earth orbit? Or can we even go to space? Can we go to the moon? Is the Earth flat? Is the sun really close? There's so many ridiculous questions, but when you just look at the pho photographic evidence, you know something is being hidden. And to me, that 
raises, you know, a several trillion dollar question. Does NASA owe the taxpayer a bunch of money back for fraud, every man, woman, and child in America, for lying to us this whole time? Can we take, you know, them seriously as a beacon of science? You know, when everybody in their own camp can't seem to get the, the facts together. NASA showing us a perfect circle image of Earth. You know, Neil deGrasse Tyson is saying, no, no, the Earth isn't round. It's an oblique spheroid, more pear shape. But that's an official NASA photo. And it's perfectly round. But, you know, it's only perfectly round if you use the Photoshop selection tool. So, yeah, let me know what you guys think. And I think this begs further discussion.